I'm using the back of the paper um, and you're free to do that as well. Usually there is a front and back for watercolor papers, um, but I usually use both sides when I'm doing demonstrations. So anyway, I wanted to show you um, how it might be useful to use uh, a liquid masket um, to do a, a wash background without you know, having to stop and go around um, like this little skinny branch that I did. So I've protected my brush with a little bit of soft soap, blot it a little bit, and then I'm going to dip it into the liquid masket right here. And I'm just going to paint just like I did the fence. And I have a relatively fine brush because I want fine lines with this. So I'm going to go in for a little bit of detail here. I just did a little sketch, but I can I can make a few more branches if I want to. I might do that. I'm trying to look around the phone so I can see the When you, when you know you're going to do a background with a certain color uh, that needs to be mixed, it's not right out of the tube, but even if it is watercolor right out of the tube, um, you still should mix uh, a batch of it just so that you don't have to stop. What we're trying to achieve right now. And remember this, remember I told you about this smearing, it's not a big deal because when I take it off it's just gonna be like an eraser. I'm just kind of adding more branches here just for interest. Now when you use it really thin, this liquid mask it, um, there is a chance for the paint to bleed into it, but that's not a big deal for, what, for my purposes right now. Sometimes I like it to bleed. So I'm just gonna do a few branches here. Even though I have a little bit of yellow added to this, it's still kind of difficult. And I've got one little lonely leaf hanging off of it. So I think that I've done all that I need to do just to kind of at least show you what I'm doing. You wanna make sure that you clean your brush really good after using liquid mask it because there will be some, some mask it stuck to it. So. Um, should come out though if you treat your brush with the soft soap ahead of time or even just regular soap. I'm not going to take the time right now to go and wash this. I want to make sure the mask is dry so I'm going to take some time to mix up some paint here. I've already gotten a start on it. Got a cup here with some paint. I've got two different blues in here. I've got an ultramarine green shade and I have um, phthalo blue mixed in. So I could mix in a little bit of ultramarine red shade just to kind of see what that does. This should be plenty to give me a nice even background. And I can, you know, add another another blue into it while I'm painting. Uh, you could mix that up ahead of time too. I'm not going to. Let me just check and make sure this mask it is dry. I, I used it very thin so it should be dry. Using it thin, like I said, there's always you know, a chance that the paint could seep through, but I think it will suit our purposes. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get a good flat brush. 
Um, and actually, I think I want to use uh, this brush over here. I could use a filbert. Um, I'm going to use this brush. It's a nice flat brush. So. I'm using it quite wet. I'm working on a flat surface, so there's not going to be any dripping. If you want there to be dripping, you can always tilt whatever it is. Right now, I'm, my, my uh, work is uh, taped to an artboard. So what I want to make sure of is that I'm giving even strokes, not too much paint that will pool in any one area. I do have it taped down, so hopefully it won't start buckling. Once it starts buckling, you might get paint pooling. We don't really want that. I don't think on my little leaf that was quite dry. <laughs> so this is an example of really making sure it's dry. That's okay. I can go in and scrub that out. So I could go ahead and fill in this whole area, but I think you can see how it's it's drying pretty even. You kind of don't want to keep going over it like I am, but I'm noticing around the, the branch it's not, it's kind of starting to dry in some areas. The reason why you want to try and prevent it from drying in some areas is so that you don't get a lot of the lines. This would be a good time to introduce another color and it looks like I have a little dot of mask it that fell out there. A little bit of a darker ultramarine red shade here and I'll just do that on the bottom. I apologize for not paying attention to if the phone if the phone is right over it or not. I'm just trying to focus on the background. Okay, now I'm I was trying to achieve a background that would dry relatively streakless. Now it, you can see streaks in the snow, but what I'm hoping is that um, that'll calm down. And then as it dries, it will start to smooth out. And also at this point too, it's already probably a little too dry, but I wanted to show how you can score it. I've got this little tool right here. Some areas are already a little too dry. But the areas that aren't, hopefully you'll be able to see it pooling. Sometimes it takes a little while. This will kind of mimic rain. See, this is the effect I want, where it, it pools the pigment in where I scored it. And that is the effect I want. Didn't really get it anywhere else. I guess it was just really drying fast. It doesn't work as great when you paint over it after you've already scored it. Um, but there are little areas, and it'll probably continue to pool in the areas where it wasn't uh, completely dry. And just like anything with watercolor, you do have to be patient. Some of the effects just won't show up right away. But this shows up really good, and this was the effect that I wanted.